kind. So basically, 48 hours after he was told he had cancer, he died of cancer. So luckily, he didn't have to suffer with that fear that my dad had, that my grandmother had, that terrible, terrible fear. Thankfully, God loved, God, thank you so much. Lemmy did not have to go through that. Not all of it. I'm sure it wasn't a fun two days. 48 hours later, the heavy metal icon died while sitting in front of his favorite poker video game in his Las Vegas, Los Angeles home surrounded by his family. Lemmy, look at these pictures. There you go. Um, there he is with those two aforementioned female fans. Uh, there's his birthday cake. They censored out the finger. Ridiculous. Uh, there he is. I mean, look at this. This is 2010. It felt like it was a long time ago. And he hasn't been sick. This is what the official Motorhead site said, of course. There's no easy way to say this. Our mighty, normal friend Lemmy has passed away today after a short battle with an extremely aggressive cancer. My guess would be liver. He had learned of the disease on December 26th and was at home, sitting by his favorite video game from The Rainbow, which had recently made its way down the street with his family. So I guess they brought him the video game? I don't know what that means. It says, We cannot begin to express our shock and sadness. There aren't words. We will say more in the coming days, but for now, please play Motorhead loud, play Hawkwind loud, and play Lemmy's music loud. Have a drink, or a few. Share stories. Celebrate the life this lovely, wonderful man celebrated so vibrantly himself. He would want exactly that. Ian Lemmy Kilmister, 1945-2015, born to lose, live to win. Let me tell you something. I got to see the mighty Motorhead once, and they were great. Great. The man played chords on a bass. Do you understand? They played chords on a bass. Um, that's what gave them that full, rich sound. They could be a three-piece, and they had the, 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 the force of Metallica. They even covered in their Sandman. That's how. Um, his death was announced in a statement on the Motorhead Facebook page, which remembered a mighty, noble friend and called on fans to play his music loud and to have a drink or few. Well, you know what? I did. I played uh, the game. I played their cover of Enter Sandman, and I played my favorite Motorhead song, Them Not Me, and I cranked them where I worked. His news sent shockwaves through the metal industry, of course, uh, the music industry, I should say, with Ozzy Osbourne, Billy Idol, and Brian May tributing their friend. Um, they give us a little bit of Motorhead. I probably won't be able to monetize this video, but it's fine. Let's remember what a legend sounds like in a world of garbage. <laughs> Katy Perry crap that nobody wants to listen to. It said he worked as a roadie for Jimi Hendrix and played bass in the space rock band Hawkwind before being kicked out for drug abuse, and then founding Motorhead in 75. What he said was he got thrown out for using the wrong drugs. They were all on drugs. They really were. There he is. If I play too much, they won't let me monetize it. Um, cementing his rock and roll credentials, he boasted about sleeping with more than a thousand women and claimed that he drank a bottle of Jack Daniels every day for years. That's not a good call. He was also, of course, he collected Third Reich memorabilia, but he said he collected memorabilia, not ideals. Uh, he had black girlfriends, for crying out loud. I believe him. He wasn't a Nazi. I, I wouldn't be wearing the uniforms he wore, but he just liked the way they looked, that's all. He said it repeatedly. Ozzy said he lost one of his best friends. Lemmy today will be sadly missed. He was a warrior and a legend. He said, I'll see you on the other side. Hopefully not too soon, Oz, man. Grammy award-winning band Motorhead released 23 studio albums over a 40-year period and announced Killmister's death. There he is with Gene Simmons. Billy Idol, R.I.P. Motorhead, my condolences to his family. Sharon Olsborn, my dear friend, Lemmy passed away today. I've known him for 38 years. He will be missed and he will never be forgotten. Um, it's awful, friends. Literally, it's awful. Shock and sadness, to say the least. Uh, when we say one of a kind in rock and roll, Lemmy was the epitome of that, one of the most beloved characters in all of rock and roll, and I can't think of anyone who didn't adore Lemmy. You can't say heavy metal without mentioning Lemmy. And if you're a 13-year-old kid learning to play bass, you want to play like Lemmy. He is one of those. He's one of a kind. And I will personally miss seeing him out on the road. We've done many, many shows with him, and we were look forward. We used to look forward to it every time. Rock and roll heaven just got heavier. That's from Alice Cooper, fellow Christian, by the way, for those of you that don't know. It says tributes poured in from all over. Um, ex Motorhead guitarist Fast Eddie Clark, who played from from '76 to '82, 
saying that he was like a brother. Um, basically, this was a really good man. Um, Motley Crue, Nikki Six says, I'll miss you, buddy, in our conversations. You were always a pillar of dignity. Rest in peace, Lemmy. A pillar of dignity. What a great thing to be called when you die. Anybody hearing me? Um, Metallica. You can't get a higher accolade, can you? Let Metallica said, you're one of the primary reasons this band exists. We'll forever be grateful for your inspiration. Rest in peace. Flea. Flea from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. It'll make Christelle happy. Oh my, Lemmy got let in on the big secret. I love the way he worded that. The, knowing that there's something beyond this life. That there is... There is a heaven. There is an afterlife. Listen, Lemmy got let in on the big secret, writes Fleet. One of the greatest rockers of all time. Amazingly unique. Incredible bass player. My hero. Wow. That's Flea. It's one of the best bass players that ever lived. Mega Geek Meltdown. My friend died today. We'll miss you. Your name is Lemmy, and you played rock and roll. Messed in peace, my man. He used to always say, <coughs> We're Motorhead, and we play rock and roll. That was always the way he opened the show. We play rock and roll. Rock band Judas Priest, my personal favorite, tweeted, Words about Lemmy can never be enough. So we will simply say farewell, Lord Lemmy, and thank you for your music and the shows. Aerosmith drummer, who I got to see them last summer, one of the best drummers I've ever seen in my life. Joey Kramer added, Rest in peace, Lemmy, heaven is rocking tonight. It's just awful, literally awful. Corey Taylor said, uh, your name was Lemmy, you played rock and roll singer of Slipknot. And this is what, uh, in his own words, Lemmy had to say. Um, I was a roadie for Jimi Hendrix, so I'm hard to fucking impress. Lemmy said it in his own words. Uh, Motorhead frontman Lemmy will be remembered not only for his great music, but also for his many memorable quotes. Quote, they would come to stage the Beatles, and they, I was just awestruck. They had that presence, which was very rare. Hendrix had it. Ozzy Osbourne has it to some extent. You either got it or you don't. Ozzy definitely has it. Uh, from an interview with The Independent, I like being the center of attention as much as anybody, so I don't mind. I was in it for the girls at first, to tell you the truth. I think if more musicians told the truth, that their main reason why most of them were in it. When you're young and you're desperate to get laid, you work out that being a bricklayer isn't that attractive. That's hilarious. That's actually not why I got into music, by the way, but I found that to be rather common among other people, so at least he's honest. Our Guns N' Roses bassist Duff McCraggan said, Rest in peace, Lemmy, a hell of a man who suffered no fools. Amen. You shall be missed, brother, and thank you for the years of unwavering kick-ass rock and roll. Um, this is from another interview in The Independent. Um, there's only two kinds of music I can't stand, rap and opera. Opera because it's too overblown, and rap because I just don't hear it. I don't get it. Uh, it's noise. Well, not all of it. I mean, you've got, like, Steve Grant and that. Um, rapper Ice-T said uh, he just got the sad news about the loss of Lemmy from Motorhead. Rip and hell, race some hell, homie. I got to hang with Lemmy and did a song on his video in a movie. Beverly Knight, who is starring in Gris Grisbella in Cats, the musical, said it was a wonderful, gravelly voice. Now that wonderfully, wonderful, gravelly voice is now silenced. That's the saddest statement I've heard. That brings tears to your eyes, doesn't it? From an interview with Rolling Stone, I was a roadie for. I read that one to you. Um, you've got to beat Jimi Hendrix to impress me. So I don't see you doing that. I thought we thought Jimmy was overrated, but whatever. When asked by Rolling Stone if he listened to younger bands during the 2012 interview, he said, I know I'm happily, I'm, I don't know happily married couples, not even my parents. There was a magazine in England who said I screwed 2,000 women, and I didn't. I said 1,000. And when you think about it, it isn't that unreasonable. I'm not even married, and I've been doing this since I was 16, and I'm now 66. So that's like 50 years. I couldn't have... I could have done more if I'd have tried, I guess. In other words, he's saying he was promiscuous, but he would never hurt anybody. Author Neil Gaiman, of course, the Sandman, said, Rest in peace, Lemmy, a man I saw playing the fruit machines in late night dives, and once thanked me for getting, for, once thanked me into one. Once thanked me for getting, and once thanked for getting me into one. Awfully worded sentence. It must have been a tweet. Figures of the world wrestling, in which the band was a close affinity, posted messages. WWE star Triple H said, Rest in peace, Lemmy, one life lived your way from the beginning to the end. See you at the end of the road, my friend. Thank you with the gift of your sound. 
Of course, he made music for the WWE quite often. The game was one of his best tracks. Stone Cold Steve Austin added, Damn, just heard Lemmy passed away. Swig of beer with one hand. <coughs> to one badass original rocker, Motorhead, one of the all-time most influential bands. Bubba Ray Dudley, also a WWE star, treated uh, about it. Said, glad to have met you with a drink of Jack and Cokes. And the news of Killmister's death hit off in Los Angeles particularly hard. Eddie Trunk said, sorry to report that it's confirmed, of course, Lemmy's passed away at the age of 70, an rock and roll icon. Um, it's interesting, he said he never married because the love of his life, a woman named Susan Bennett, had died of a heroin overdose at 19, and he dedicated his autobiography to Miss Bennett. He struggled to quit his vices in later years, according to the band's manager, of course, Todd Singerman. He was born in 45 in Stock-on-Trent. He was born on Christmas Eve, so he just he just turned 70. He barely made it. Uh, very young. The group later became one of the defining metal bands of the 80s. He wrote an autobiography, White Line Fever, that he had been fired from his previous band, Hawkwood, for doing the wrong drugs. He once got popped in Canada for drugs, so he wasn't a saint. But, I mean, last summer, Glastonbury, look at it. He doesn't look particularly healthy, but he doesn't look like he's going to die. There he is in the 80s. And uh, he was also known for his uh, Third Reich memorabilia. He had an iron cross encrusted on his base, but he maintained, I, I collect stuff, I don't collect ideas. He said, by collecting Nazi memorabilia, it doesn't mean that I'm a fascist or a skinhead. I, I just like the clobber. I've always liked a good uniform, and throughout history, it's always been the bad guys who dress the best. Napoleon, the Confederates, the Nazis. Of course, he had diabetes, and uh, he was fighting that. He had to have a pacemaker put in. They had uh, postponed a string of shows earlier in the year. Uh, Decibel Magazine said he'd been up and down. He had a really bad diabetic problem, and he had changes with it on a daily basis. A lot of it's fighting the bad habits, the things he's not supposed to do anymore. He stopped smoking, and he probably sneaks a Jack and Coke here and there. He'd be lying if he said he completely stopped. And hours before appearing on the Monsters of Rock Festival in Brazil, Brazil, Bra Brazil, Brazil, that's great, in April, Kilmester was reportedly taken in with gastric distress and dehydration. In 2013, they postponed it while he had a hematoma, which is a dreadful bruise. My dad had one of those. He was fitted with a defibrillator to correct heart problems. In a recent interview with the German magazine Lust for Life, Kilmester said he had close to death during his last surgery. It was only a moment I was stalked by the devil called doubt, and I wondered if I would make it. I'm not afraid of death. I often sing about it. Shout out, killed by death. So I wasn't shaking in my bed, but I did have a feeling that I wasn't done yet. I still wanted to do more shows and make more records. That feeling pulled me through all of this. Motorhead were set to tour the UK in January in support of their 23rd album, Bad Magic, which I did not know came out and will now want to hear even more, which was released in August of uh, this year. I didn't think they'd release one so quick because they released the last one, and I played the tar out of that. Uh, they released this rather quickly, which I, caught me off guard, so I will be checking it out. In June, the band graced Glastonbury. Just in June, he was playing Glastonbury. For the first time in their 40-year history, playing a triumphant return on the Pyramid stage. Of course, best known for the Ace of Spades. And there you go. There is, uh... Well, she looks stoned, doesn't she? Uh, and there he is with Billy Idol. That was in 89. Uh, Awful news, friends. Yeah, I spent some time on it. You're damn straight I did. Damn straight I did, and I don't feel bad that I did. Let me kill mister. Rest in peace, buddy. I loved you. I remember jamming to study hall to uh, No Sleep at All. It's it's the Everybody likes uh, no, the other live album they did. No, 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 no. One of the best live albums, perhaps one of the most underappreciated live albums of all time, is No Sleep at All by Motorhead. If you've never heard it, listen to it. It used to be that you weren't allowed to take uh, headphones into your classes. So I would wear long sleeve shirts and run the headphones split and sit like this in study hall and just jam out. And, uh, I mean, just because you got the power, that don't mean you got the right. I mean, God, I listen to it all the time. I can't believe he's gone. All right, I gave a lot of time to it. Let me, my 
dear bass player, rest in peace. And that brings us to the dum-dee, 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 I might add, dum-dee, dum-dee, dum-dee of the day. For those of you that don't know, I do the Dunce Cap of the Month once every month. And uh, this will be no exception, an exception this month. I give you the dum-dee of the day. So I gave you a nice long show. You can't say I gave you a depressing show for crying out loud. I, I, I saw Lemmy off. I did my job. Berlin, Germany. This dumb day of the day goes to Merkel, the president of Germany, for letting these idiots in unvetted. I am Muslim. What are you? Muslim beat, Muslims beat Christians for Christmas fun. If you guys want to hear all the Christmas links I got rid of, let me know. Leave a comment, and I promise you I'll get back to them. I will look up my bookmarks, and I will give you that story. Let me know you want to hear about the free speech persecution of Christians. I'll give you a whole half hour on it. I got a whole bunch of stories, and I just didn't do them. A group of Christian men was jumped outside a club in Berlin on Christmas Eve. The Muslims asked the Christian men, I am Muslim. What are you? Before beating the men. Oh, it's the religion of peace. Says Germany is searching for migrants who entered the country using the same passport as the Paris terrorists did. I call them Paris. Germany welcomed nearly a million third world immigrants this year. Well, if 10% of them hate us, that's a pretty big number when I went to school. And German officials do not even take fingerprints of arriving asylum seekers. Well, why would you? Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Via Vlad Tepes and Der Spiegel translated. Vlad Tepes, what a name. I am Muslim. What are you? After asking the question, Muslims beat on Christians at Berlin Mitte on the second day of Christmas on Postum Platz. At least five injured men happened as a result of a fight on early Sunday evening in Berlin Tindergarten. The police are still investigating, but what they do know is so far that five men, after leaving the club Adagio at 1720 on the Malin Dietrich Plaza, were accosted by a man who asked them their religion, asked about their religion. The police report said that the unknown man said, I am Muslim, who are you? The qu what are you? The question resulted in a verbal shouting match. Suddenly more people arrived on the scene, and together with the unknown Muslim, they started beating on the men aged 24, 20, 20, 24, and 25. A 19-year-old man who tried to calm the men down was injured in the face. Right before the police arrived, perpetrators fled the scene, of course. The injured young men did not wish for medical treatment on the spot, and they said they were going to go to the clinic themselves. According to police, the young men that were attacked were from Serbia and Montenegro and are Orthodox Christians. So do me a favor. Don't tell me there's no persecution going on. Don't tell me that we need to let all these people unvetted into our country, because we don't know who's coming in. I'm not against helping people that need help. But remember, Ellis Island quarantined people. You bring this, you're hungry, you're, you, 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 I get it. Do you realize they were there for anywhere between 30 to 60 days before they were let loose into the country? They were vetted. And that's what we all want to see now. And that's why a lot of us are going to vote for Trump. It has nothing to do with hatred or bigotry. Friends, you're listening to The Corrected Yells. I've gone for about an hour for you with the remains of a head cold. I've been gone for a moment, but I'm reminding you why you hit subscribe. I gave you quite a show, friends. Good night, God bless, and uh, Happy New Year. Uh, I don't know how to shut this camera off.